Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Last week, for the very first time, we checked out some AMD B550 motherboards and found VRM thermal performance to be excellent, either equal to or a little bit better than slightly more expensive X570 models. So that was great news and a pleasantly surprising discovery, to say the least. I did note in that content that our ultimate goal was to discover which entry-level B550 boards were worth buying, and unfortunately, it was going to be quite a few weeks before we'd have that answer, and that's because no sub $150 models were available prior to release. In fact, even now, I'm still unable to get my hands on many of these boards with stock anywhere from one to four weeks away. So it's a bit disappointing that we're not able to go and check out the boards that we'd like to, but as a result of the delay, I've had time to go back and do some updated B450 testing. One of the most upvoted comments on the previous B550 video noted the complete lack of B450 motherboards in that comparison, and there were a few reasons why those boards were absent from the results. And the main reason for this being that I simply ran out of time. We had a lot going on with the Intel 10th Gen Core series and all the supporting Z490 motherboards. And although B550 testing was a priority, our hands really were tied waiting for boards to arrive. And in the end, ASUS and ASRock didn't make the final deadline. That being the case, it was hard to say exactly how we're gonna tackle the content without knowing exactly which boards we were gonna be covering. I guess the idea would have been to compare the quality B450 boards like the MSI Tomahawk and Pro Carbon with the cheaper B550 models, but they never arrived. And now that we're looking at a possible three to four week delay before we can complete our initial B550 budget roundup, I decided to compare the cheapest board we have, the MSI B550M Mortar, with the B450 models I just mentioned. This will require some changes to our current AM4 VRM test setup as the configuration used to test the X570 boards and now B550 boards is just too extreme for almost all B450 motherboards. As I explained in our last video, the overall quality of B450 motherboards was quite poor and we're now seeing B550 boards coming in at a $20 premium offering vastly superior VRM designs along with other features such as PCIe 4.0 for example. When testing the X570 boards for the first time, we really wanted to stress the VRM, allowing us to separate the wheat from the chaff. We also had a huge amount of boards to test, and since there was a chance that we'd have to redo all the testing once the Ryzen 9 3950X was released, I opted for a quicker test method by using an open test bench. Now, if I had have directed airflow over the VRM heat sinks in this particular test setup, that would have resulted in unrealistically low temperatures as we're testing in a 21 degree room and any hot air generated by the system can easily escape an open air test bench. Anyway, in the end, the test setup worked well enough and it very accurately allowed us to work out which X570 boards you should and shouldn't invest in. And since we already had a large volume of data for X570 motherboards, I simply replicated that test method for some of the B550 boards that we've already checked out. Again, that video was uploaded last week if you're interested. For this updated B450 testing, we're gonna look at a few different test configurations. But first, let's take a look at the test bench results with no direct airflow using the Ryzen 9 3900X with PBO plus auto OC enabled in the Ryzen master software. The only X570 motherboard to throttle the Ryzen 9 3900X and therefore fail this test was the MSI Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. However, most X570 motherboards passed with ease, peaking at less than 90 degrees. And as an example, the ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus was excellent, hitting just 73 degrees. Unfortunately though, these test conditions are a bit too extreme for the beloved MSI B450 Tomahawk as the board's VRM quickly hit 111 degrees where it heavily throttled the CPU to avoid increasing thermals further. Now, the B450 Tomahawk and Pro Carbon technically have the same VRM, though there are some critical changes. Firstly, the Pro Carbon features twice as many chokes or inductors. Actually, Buildzoid prefers the term inductors. So let's go with that from now on to help make it a little bit easier for the viewers to understand what we're talking about. So the Pro Carbon has eight inductors for the V-Core portion of the VRM, whereas the Tomahawk has just four. This is important to note as inductors do act a bit like heat sinks for the MOSFETs. So that being the case, the Pro Carbon has an advantage here. But perhaps the biggest advantage comes from the actual heat sinks themselves, as the Pro Carbon features 42% more metal. And although not nearly as many fins are cut into them, the fact that they're physically so much larger hands the Carbon an advantage when it comes to cooling capacity. Keeping all that in mind, we do see quite a big difference between these two boards on our passively cooled test bench. The B450 Tomahawk actually failed this test, throttling the 3900X inside of 10 minutes, whereas the Pro Carbon peaked at 97 degrees after the hour-long test. Interestingly, the B450 Pro Carbon uses a similar VRM design to that of the X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi and X570A Pro. 
The main difference being the X570 boards use doublers. It's possible with a retest, the X570 boards would be slightly better given we've seen numerous Ajisa updates since that initial testing and there may be some voltage optimization there, but it really doesn't matter too much. Those MSI X570 boards were and still are a dumpster fire. But the point being the B450 Pro Carbon passed this test by the skin of its teeth while the Tomahawk just couldn't handle the thermal load. Basically the MSI B450 Pro Carbon, B450 Tomahawk, X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi and X570A Pro were all put to shame by the new MSI B550 M Mortar. Speaking of the mortar, here's how the B550 board compares to the outgoing B450 models in an ATX case with airflow. Okay, so for a quick and easy reference, I've included the results that we've just looked at at the top of this graph labeled test bench passive. Here the B550M mortar ran 30 degrees cooler than MSI's best B450 board, though the mortar does cost around $20 more, but still that's a significant improvement in VRM quality. Ignoring the second lot of results, let's jump to the bottom of the graph and talk about the ATX case results. For this test, I'm using our AM4 test system, which is built inside the Corsair Crystal Series 570X, fully populated with fans and a 360mm Corsair all-in-one liquid cooler mounted to the front. Basically, we have three 120mm intake fans in the front, with three exhaust fans in the top and rear of the case. When compared to the passively cooled open test bench, we see the mortar dropped by 13 degrees down to a peak of just 54 degrees. The B450 Pro Carbon saw a similar drop in temperature, dropping 14 degrees with a peak of 83 degrees. So despite testing in an ATX case, the mortar was still roughly 30 degrees cooler. The B450 Tomahawk also managed to avoid the thermal throttling issues that were seen on the open test bench, peaking at 88 degrees in the ATX case. While on the test bench, I decided to see just how cool you could run these boards by placing a 120mm fan directly on top of the VRM heatsinks. When compared to the ATX case results, the mortar dropped by a further 12 degrees to just 42 degrees. So that's about the lowest result you'll see in a 21 degree room. The Pro Carbon dropped down to 67 degrees, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. In an absolute best case scenario, this flagship B450 motherboard was only able to match the temperature of the mortar in our worst case scenario. That just goes to show how much better these B550 boards are. So there you have it, boards like the MSI B550M mortar are a significant upgrade over even the very best B450 motherboards. And yeah, it does cost a little bit more right now, but like I said in the previous B550 video, you get a number of new features as well, not just beefier VRMs, though I'd say that upgrade alone justifies the price hike. Also, don't forget that the B450 Gaming Pro Carbon was released at $140 US, and that means you're paying just 15% more for the newer B550 model when comparing the launch prices. Of course, there are even cheaper B550 boards, which should still comfortably beat the B450 models tested here in terms of variant performance. And again, I have pre-ordered them, so once they arrive, I'll test them out and we'll be able to better gauge the value of the new B550 range. In the meantime, I'm still seeing a lot of people complaining about the prices of these B550 boards, and I get it, they cost a bit more. But as I've explained, it's a little too early to be getting the pitchforks out. I've already cited a number of B450 and X570 motherboard examples where boards dropped anywhere from $20 to $40 in price just months after release. So it is quite possible once B450 stock runs out, we'll see a drop in B550 pricing. Also, if you don't want to pay a premium for features such as PCIe 4.0 and typically much better VRM quality, then just buy a B450 board. But be aware, most B450 boards, especially the cheaper models, will struggle to run a Ryzen 9 processor, even stock, and you'll certainly need to ensure large volumes of air are directed over the heatsinks. Of course, if you're running a Ryzen 5 or a Ryzen 7 processor right now, it's not a concern. This is just a concern for those that want to hold onto the board and maybe upgrade to a secondhand Ryzen 9 processor down the track. And that does seem as though it could be a rather attractive upgrade option in a few years time. But as I said, if you're just gaming, then the VRM thermals on a cheap B450 board won't really be a major issue. But then I guess that kind of defeats the purpose of owning a Ryzen 9 processor. Looking over our ATX results, we see that both MSI B450 boards ran their VRMs at over 80 degrees in a super well ventilated case in a relatively cool room, but they can handle the Ryzen 9 3900X with PBL enabled, providing those favorable conditions are met. But if you hope to upgrade in the future to a third or possibly even a fourth gen Ryzen 9 processor, then I really do think spending a little extra to get a decent B550 board is a seriously good and very wise investment.
And finally, I think it's well worth noting the fact that we now have a broader range of quality, affordable AM4 motherboards to pick from, and that is obviously a very good thing. And that is going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this B450 versus B550 comparison. And if you did, make sure you subscribe because there is a lot more testing to come. You can also like, uh, you can jump over to our Patreon account if you want to get access to uh, exclusive Discord chat Q&As, which are coming up next week. Tim and I will be doing that, uh, I think on Thursday, there'll be a live stream as well for Patreon members. So if you're interested, that is something you can click the link and, and check out if you're interested. But if not, perfectly fine. And yeah, above all else, just thank you very much for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.